there's just something special about this time of day. Don't know what it is. Don't know what to say. But you know, if you walk in the light, as he is in the light, you have fellowship one with another. When you see the light breaking forth, casting its glow, as it were, through the sunshine of someone's smile, or through the delight and the sparkle in the eyes, you notice it and you say, wow, there's something different about that person. They have the light in them. You know, when you wake up in the morning and you look at the sunrise and you see, wow, look at the way that the sun crests the horizon and it just casts its beams all the way across around the world, you stand amazed. You go, ooh, this is pretty. I should take a picture. <coughs> when you consider those things and you meditate upon them, when you look at the light, you see things differently in a different perspective. You kind of notice things that sparkle in the light. You notice things that seem to glow from the light. You notice things that seem to cause you to pay attention to them more so than you would have had they not been in the light. For instance, if you were wearing black and you were in the dark, you wouldn't notice. But suddenly when the light is cast upon the black, you notice the dark. When light is cast upon darkness, it's interesting that you see it. For the shadows are made aware, but when it's in the light, Oh my God, the shadows flee from fright or out of sight. At least they're gone until it's night. But whether we rhyme it or whether we put it in time, whether we choose to pay attention to the light or not, is our own detection and our own reflection of how we deal with God in a personal way. Because you are a child of the light. If you <coughs> have he who is the light of the world, in you, then you have become the salt of the earth. You have become children of the light and children of the day. You are that brightness of God come into the day to reveal to those things with which you are involved in. Whether for good or for bad, who knows? But I can tell you this, as long as you walk in the light, as long as you talk about light, as long as you operate with Jesus in your life, then you have the light of the world and you should not walk in darkness. Jesus prayed the third time saying the same words. Who in the days of his flesh offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death. Jesus cried offering up prayers and supplications. Then shall we know if we follow on to know the Lord, continuing instant in prayer, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit of God, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication. By prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Nevertheless, nevertheless, not as I will, will. <coughs> this is the confidence that we have in Him. That if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. Delight thyself. Delight thyself in the Lord. And He shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way unto the Lord. Trust also in Him, and He shall bring it to pass. I like when light came into the world, for it is said that when light came into the world, men received it not, for they loved their deeds and they, the things that they did in darkness, rather than come to the light, lest their deeds be revealed for what they were. And you know, that's how we ought to be in the morning. We ought to come to God that our lies may be revealed. That our lies might be lit, as it were. That we might have the lamp 
so to speak, of the candle of who we are, of the wick of our own experiences with God, placed in that candelabra that God has in heaven, that menorah that he walks in the midst thereof, that he might see the light you are and bless you today for the way that you're walking in his light.